Okay, this will be your second discussion topic on Aristotle. And the topic will read, Aristotle and his Nicomachean Ethics claims. Now, most things that please people conflict because they are not pleasant by nature, whereas things that please lovers of the fine are pleasant by nature. Actions in accord with virtue are pleasant by nature so that they please lovers of the fine and are pleasant in their own right. That's page 11 of your Nicomachean Ethics. In lecture, we discussed, or I discussed, this passage in terms of a dog that I met on my paper route when I was young. Um, remember that story about the dog that had a conflict between what he wanted and what he wanted, right? So, um, it, 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 uh, in what sense would Aristotle argue that we're distinct and in a better position to manage our desires than that dog? Now, this is an interesting passage. And I'll just read it again. Now, most things that please people conflict because they're not pleasant by nature, whereas things that please lovers of the fine are, are things pleasant by nature. Actions in accord with virtue are pleasant by nature so that they please lovers of the fine and are pleasant in their own right. You see, what Aristotle's arguing here, right, is that there is something for human beings. Right? Remember, with the function of argument, right, uh, of all things that have a function, the good for those things can be understood in terms of that function. What Aristotle is aiming to do, right, is to lay out the conditions for flourishing for human beings so that we can live a good human life, exercising our distinctive capacities to their, their, their fullest, and uh, you basically describe what it is to be an excellent human being, right? Now, what pleases most of us in terms of, like, say, beer or chocolate or uh, excitement or sex or any of these sorts of things, right? What Aristotle tends to think is that a lot of these things are not pleasant by nature. They might be good, right? There might be sort of a skill and a refinement involved in enjoying really fine chocolate or tasting really fine beer or enjoying a really fine, you know, sort of sex life, right? There is an excellence and a skill and an aptitude involved in these sorts of things. But nonetheless, these things are not necessarily pleasant by nature. Interestingly, though, what Aristotle wants to argue is that the virtues are pleasant by nature and pleasing in their own right. right? So we have this funny situation where the virtues are both instrumentally valued, that is, they get you what you want, and intrinsically valued. Right? It just, it's enjoyable to develop them. Right? So, Effectively, what Aristotle is talking about here is sort of a sweet spot for the human being where what pleases you and what is best for you meet. Right? Now, on to the dog. Right? If most of us, most of us, as the quotation points out, right, want things that conflict with one another. Right? I want to do well in school, but I want to play hours of Xbox. Right? Um, I want to have a committed relationship, but I don't want to be tied down. Right? I want to have lots of money in the bank, but I want to spend like a madman, etc., etc., etc. These things are in direct conflict. We have conflicts between what we want and what we want. So that far, we're not that different than that dog that we've met on that I met on my paper route when I was young. Now what we have up on that dog, well we saw that in the function argument of those things that have the function, the excellence for those things is to perform that function well. That's virtue. So effectively what Aristotle's arguing is that if we can determine what the human function is having something to do with the exercise of her distinctive rationality, then a good human being, an excellent human being, an excellence that produces a good life for the human being is going to have something to do with the exercise of this distinctive capacity. 
effectively what Aristotle's arguing is that both the dog and us, right, we have these desires, these animalistic desires. Remember the laundry list of things that in Three Lives that um, Aristotle rejected because it's not distinctively human? Right? Certain capacity for sensation, etc., etc., etc. Right? We share that with the animals. What's distinctively human is that effectively we have this capacity for reason. So what does that mean? It means that effectively we're self-training. Right? So there's a lot of meat to dig into with your discussion of this position in Aristotle. I don't know if you agree with it. Uh, lots of philosophers definitely won't agree with it. Um, it, it you'll see with uh, Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill later on in this course, they don't necessarily agree with this position. They think Aristotle's highfalutin concept of happiness is, well, it's too highfalutin, it's too elitist kind of thing. So what Bentham and Mill wind up doing is, you know, defining happiness as pleasure in the absence of pain. Right? It's a really simple definition for happiness. Right? Whereas Aristotle has this complex definition right? that rests on the exercise of our distinctive capacity. Right? Just like when you plant a seed, it grows into a plant, it's exercising its potential. Remember Aristotle's metaphysics. Right? So the same thing, right? If we can know the conditions for flourishing for a human being, right? When we plant the seed of human, what will it look like when it flourishes and what conditions need to be produced in order for that flourishing to occur? So um, I hope you enjoyed this discussion topic, right? It's not very flattering to be compared to a dog. I know, and some of you may take issue with that. Um, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Anyhow, um, I look forward to reading your responses. Take care.